So what's up guys? I hope that all of you are fighting fit and everyone you know is safe and sound, friends and family accounted for. Given the fact there are so many albums out there and there's only one of me, <laughs> I want to try and kind of shed some light on some of the albums that I may not have had time to actually like feature review, but definitely deserve your time all the more. So I've started this monthly favourites selection and this month is a real doozy. There are some absolutely amazing bands on here and yeah, I guess we should start things off. So without further ado, my feature favourite, which is like the top album of my favourites, this month goes to Ulcerate with Stare Into Death and Be Still. So, if you're not familiar with Ulcerate, they have been around for quite a while. The first time I heard them was on Vermis, uh, which I think was a relapse debut. So the band are from New Zealand, um, they've been doing this for quite a long time, but despite how kind of heavy and ferocious this is, it doesn't necessarily become overbearing, which I think sometimes, you know, death metal can be. And the idea of the record in terms of themes is looking at kind of death from a more passive perspective and you know, kind of understanding that there is no such thing that we can do to avoid death. At least from what I kind of gathered, that's, that's what I think it is. I also love it because the album almost sounds like one singular song, just kind of going through these multiple cycles and evolving into so many different, really bleak colours. They've got a sound that is unique to them, but also incredibly recognisable, and they have this sort of cascading dissonance, which is so, so interesting but I cannot recommend this album enough. I'm sure you guys have seen the hype online. It is real, it's a fantastic record. Now, I've been a fan of August Burns Red for absolutely years, probably since I first heard Messengers when it was released. On album number nine, which is Guardians, I think they've really kind of come back to their roots, but they're also incorporating the more melodic sort of styles of their later career and you can see that on Lighthouse there's some really cool uh, singing in that but then they also bring things back to that sort of classic back burner you know like huge breakdown on Paramount for example. There's also a slight kind of prog element on Extinct by Instinct as well which I thought was kind of cool so it seems that the band are definitely kind of embracing the breakdowny sort of heritage and everything but pushing the band a little bit further out there. And I think it's, it's really kind of reaffirmed my love for them, for sure. So you should definitely check it out. Winter's here and you are cold No other bird would be so bold Now, next on my list is Elephant Tree and Habits. So this band are London-based and they are signed to Holy Raw, so automatically that is a huge seal of approval for me. I think that Holy Raw have got a really kind of fertile ground. I was trying to figure out how to describe them and they're a bit like Caius and a little bit of Cult of Luna, but then a bit of Elbow at the same time. It's got a really big feel to it and it's very much kind of post-rock cinematic sort of style, but then they've got like riffs like Torch or something like that and it does kind of throw you off a little bit. It's very ethereal in some places, and it did take me a few listens to kind of really get my ears around it. But once I did, it was a really, really interesting album and one that I keep coming back to because there's so many different layers to it. Moving on from that, we have Cold Bones. So the Cataclysm works in kind of like two parts. Essentially, it's based off these kind of philosophical ideas of an environmental disaster that is pretty much irreparable. And the first part of the album is to do with the earth being completely flooded. And the second part of the album is to do with the earth being completely burnt. So either way, we're completely screwed. <laughs> What's really cool is when you understand not only the concept, but you kind of look at the track names and how they kind of are reflected in the way that they play. I think that's a really interesting thing and it kind of creates a lot more imagery based around an instrumental 
kind of sound, which is not an easy thing to do, especially when you think of things like lyrics to describe the kind of metaphors and the imagery that you want to convey. I also found out recently that some of these ideas were taken from Randall Carson, Graham Hancock and Richard Carrington. And these are all kind of quite philosophical ideas that are, are being put forward. And I think that's really cool, especially that you could be able to do that, you know, in an instrumental capacity. So definitely don't sleep on Cold Bones, really fantastic band. Anyway, Abysmal Dawn are a fantastic death metal band from LA. I first found out about them on their Program to Consume album. I just picked that up randomly in HMV once uh, and I've been hooked ever since. So the band last released an album called Obsolescence, which was also very good. This is their debut release with Season of Mist and it's chock full of amazing grooves and really cool lead work actually. It's also got artwork from Pa Olufsen, who is pretty much like death metal royalty by now and also has a signature, quite Schuldiner-esque uh, style melody. There's solid grooves, it's technical in all the right places and does exactly what you would want from a death metal album. Next we come to a mini album from Auroc on stolen angelic tongues. Now this record deals with the spiritual traditions uh, from South America and also the Caribbean. There are strong sounds on this record that kind of reminded me of kind of immolation, early style Gorguts I would say, but also a little bit of Slayer, particularly in kind of some of the melodies which are put underneath the surface. However, there is a small amount of material on display here as it's only 19 minutes, but it's a great starting point for this Vancouver band. It must have been a cemetery for the Spanish conquistadores. So Fulci are Italian 80s horror themed death metal. What more could you want? <laughs> Not only are they fantastic death metal, but they also pay homage to Lucio Fulci, who is often seen as the godfather of gore and was responsible for creating like all of those classic Italian zombie movies of the 80s. And a lot of the songs have those classic sort of intros with little, you know, clips from the films and very much have a similar Fabio Fritzi sort of sound, which has that sort of classic 80s electronic sort of sound, but then it's pretty much completely sidelined by the death metal aspect of it, which is kind of like if Cannibal Corpse met Dying Fetus. And it's really, really solid playing throughout. And I don't know if it's maybe a little bit gimmicky, but it's always something that's appealed to me. I love the fact that horror and metal, particularly death metal, have this kind of relationship together. And finally, that brings me to my last band, which is Warbringer and Weapons of Tomorrow. So Warbringer are a band that I pretty much stumbled upon, again, in HMV years ago when I picked up their Waking Into Nightmares album. Ever since then, I've really, really loved them. They are a thrash metal band, but I also think they borrow a lot from the more extreme subgenres, so like death metal and black metal, but they have a great balance between the shorter kind of like fast ripper thrash songs and then the longer, more drawn out sort of epics. And they almost kind of move into progressive categories in some places. Like some of the tracks definitely reminded me of, you know, the kind of Metallica epics like Creeping Death or Call of Cthulhu and things like that. And it has that sort of same atmosphere about it. I also think that the band are pushing themselves a little bit more. There's some really great vocal work happening on here and some of the guitar solos I think are some of the best in the band's history. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about these bands and their albums and stuff. I've got all the links to listen or order any of the albums right underneath me. Let me know in the comments, it'd be great to chat with you guys. And if you did enjoy this video, it'd be great if you could hit that like and subscribe button. You could also follow me on Instagram over at The Metal Tris. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys very, very soon for another album review and my next month's favorites. Take care, friends.